The URL session API has many moving parts centered on the URL session class itself. As you know, to create a session, you need an instance of a URL session configuration. You then use the session to create URL session task instances to transfer data from or to a server on the network. It's much more efficient to create multiple tasks in a session and not a session for every task. You can create a task with a completion closure to handle the server's response or implement delegate methods to monitor progress and handle response data and authentication challenges. If you think of this API like a body, then the session configuration is the brains. The URL session is the heart and the session, the session data tasks are the hands. There are three concrete subclasses of URL session task. That is the URL session data task, the URL session upload task, and the URL session download task. A data task returns the response as an object in memory. An upload task is very similar to a data task, but it makes it much easier to provide a request body. A download task doesn't return the response in memory, but writes the data to a file and returns the location of the file. All three types are similar in that they supply some data to the server as a request and receive some data from the server as a response. In Safari, I have JSON placeholder.typecode.com open, which is a nice website to test JSON parsing via endpoints. Here I'm looking at a page of dummy data and I want to create a task to fetch this data. First, I'll minimize this and open up an empty playground. We'll start by first getting our configuration. Next, let's disable cellular access on this and then create a session based on our configuration. Okay, now we need to create a task. We want to create a task that will fetch the JSON from the service and ultimately print out the contents of the JSON to the console. First, we'll create a URL object passing in a string. Next, we'll create a task. We'll do this by creating a data task passing in our new URL. Now everything occurs in the trail enclosure. This is what this is what will be called after the task is completed and will occur off the main thread. So if you're going to alter the user interface, then make sure to do it on the main thread. The closure takes in three objects: the data, the response, and an error object. The data is the actual data being retrieved from the server. The response is a URL response, but if you are making an HTTP request like we're making, the returned object is actually an HTTP response. Finally, we receive an error object to see what's actually happened. First, we check if we received a valid response. We cast our response to an HTTP response, and then we can check the status code. In this case, we're checking to make sure we received a 200 status code, which means everything is fine. There are lots of other status codes out there, like a 404 page not found, or a 500 server error, and so forth. Check what works best for your app. Next, we check if we received valid data. We take this data and convert it to a string and then print out the result. Finally, we stop the playground from executing. I first need to import playground support and then I can stop the playground. Now you'd think that'd be it, but by default, tasks start off in a suspended state. 
We have to start the task, and we do that by calling the resume method on it. Run the playground. And voila, we made a web request and got back some JSON with just a little bit of code. Better still, we get all the bells and whistles of the network framework, ensuring that our users have a pleasant experience no matter what type of network they are using.